Well, here we are, Orchard family. We made it through our whole first year. And I am excited about what God's been doing in the life of our church. I've had the opportunity over the last couple of weeks to visit with a bunch of people and sort of reminisce about this last year and, and everything that God has done in our church family, and uh, it's, been, it's been an exciting time. Um, our, our little church may not look like much, you know, from the outside. We don't even have our own building to meet in, which is kind of a big deal to a lot of people. Um, but what God has done in this group of people over the last year has been truly amazing, and that's what we're celebrating and worshiping God for this morning. Um, we're just going to share a few snippets um, of what God has been up to uh, in the life of our church, some that you may be aware of, some that you may not be, and uh, we're going to use all of that good news that we share together um, to prompt and inform and uh, inspire our worship of God today for uh, everything he's done. In any baby's life, there are benchmarks that we hope to see to know that that baby is healthy and developing uh, appropriately, right? We take our kids to the doctor to, to, for checkups, and uh, they make sure that their physical body is doing well, that they have a strong heartbeat and, and breathing, they check their vision and their hearing and their reflexes and all sorts of other things. And as, as it turns out, we can do many of those same kinds of things when we're looking at the health of a church family, because it is also a living breathing organism. The Bible actually uses this imagery of the church as a body uh, an awful lot. Ephesians 4 says, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That last phrase is what we're shooting for in the orchard. We want to be a body that is healthy and growing and full of love. So how can you tell objectively if that's the case, if that is uh, true of a church family? Well, there's lots of things you can look at to try and determine um, whether that is the case or not. Let me share with you just a few statistics um, about what's going on in the orchard that hint at the fact that we are a healthy and growing body. So far in the life of our church, we have done eight service projects in our community as a church family. Um, we have offered 11 different life groups that have met in people's homes across the valley, and those have involved at least 37 families and well over 100 individuals that have participated. Um, on the smaller scale, on some of the more personal sides of things, we have had the opportunity to share in the joy of three new marriages since uh, this project began. Uh, Nick and Tiff Young um, are interns from Boise Bible College who are out of town this weekend. Um, Jesse and Megan Roberto, uh, and Ryan and Kayla Norris. Um, we're happy to share this season of life with them. We've also been blessed with the births of three babies in our church family since we started. Uh, that's Malachi Rogers, and Peter Sebastian, and Charlotte Polk. And we've even shared together in the sadness uh, of three supporters of this new church project who have passed on from this life to their eternal reward in heaven. Roger Yant, Stan Agenbrod, and Hal Fisher. Now all these examples of the real life stuff that we've been through together as a church family are standard marks of what it means to be a healthy church family. In fact, I just want us to, to see a physical representation of what a healthy, active church family looks like. So I want to ask you to do something for me. Uh, it's, not, it's not too shocking. I'm going to call out some different groups of people. If you fit this cat, one of these categories, I just want you to stand up just right where you're at, okay? Um, in this past year, uh, if we as a church family have had the great privilege of baptizing you into Christ, would you just stand up where you're at? Robin and Maxie and Kalina and Erica and uh, oh, the short guy. Yeah, you see, that's my son. <laughs> the members that are here this morning, we are excited and privileged to get to share this journey with you guys. So if you would stay standing, thank you. Um, if you have attended one of the three Class 101 uh, membership classes that we've done in this last year, would you stand up? If you have attended any one of those, that includes the Lawrence's. Yeah. You can, uh, All right, tremendous. Stay standing up. Um, if you have served in any ministry area of our church this past year or participated in any of our service projects, would you stand up and join those that are already there? 
If you have ever attended a life group or any other event that the church has done outside of Sunday morning, would you stand up where you're at? <laughs> All right. Now I want you to just look around just for a moment. This is what a healthy and loving and growing church body looks like. It's healthy and growing and full of love. You can be seated. Thank you for indulging. I wanted to share a few of those statistics that we don't cover uh, terribly often. And by the way, if you weren't standing among one of those groups, um, our goal is that by our second birthday party, you will be in multiples of those groups. And so, stick around. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep getting fun. Um, we don't often talk about those kind of statistics in a church family, um, but I want to make sure that as a church family, we are looking at a very broad picture of what God is doing in the life of our church. And God is always up to something, and there's always ways that we can see him at work uh, on us and in us and through us. Um, but probably the most common uh, statistics that people look at uh, in order to determine um, the relative health of any church family uh, are those uh, statistics of attendance and giving. So I also want to just spend uh, just a moment looking at those figures with you as well. Um, there's definitely something to be said for keeping an eye on uh, attendance and giving, especially for a brand new church plant. Uh, because if the vision of a new church doesn't really resonate with people, uh, which results in people attending and bringing their friends and neighbors with them, um, the odds are that that kind of church is not going to last for very long, and so attendance is meaningful. Likewise, if uh, a church's vision and the family that God's drawing together doesn't inspire people uh, to give and doesn't uh, disciple them in the area of financial stewardship towards God's kingdom, um, those kinds of churches also end up shutting down just for lack of resources. Uh, there's a handful of organizations that study new churches all across the country, and uh, I want to share just one significant finding from two of these groups. Um, just sort of as a measuring stick to, to give you a good idea of sort of where we're at in the life of our church, you know, relatively speaking, compared to most uh, new churches as they start. Um, according to Ed Stetzer, who's one of the foremost uh, experts on church planting, he is the editor of the Church Planting Survivability and Health Study, which came from the Center for Missional Research in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, after studying more than a thousand congregations and uh, new church plants from more than a dozen denominations and church planting uh, groups and organizations across the country, they were able to confidently state many facts about uh, the church planting world. And one that I want to point out um, that they're very confident in, and unfortunately so, is that the typical church plant does not pass 100 in attendance after four years. Now to see just how the orchard uh, compares to this statistic nationally, um, I put together a little graph of the monthly gatherings of, uh, of the orchard. Um, there it is. That first bar is the monthly gatherings that we did uh, before we launched our Sunday morning services. We averaged 36 in attendance in those. And then when we had our preview services, sort of our practices, before we uh, officially, officially invited our community, we averaged 56. And then the next four bars are each of the four quarters of this last year in three-month blocks. Uh, last spring, we averaged 78 a week. In the summer, we averaged 91. Uh, in the fall, we averaged 104. And in the winter, just these last three months, the first three months of this year, We've averaged 111. So within six months of launching this church, and we've already achieved what the typical church plant in the country isn't able to do within four years. And I think that is just an amazing and miraculous. And according to that trajectory that we're on, by a year from this fall, uh, we should be averaging about 200 in our weekly works worship services, and that to me is nothing short but an amazing work of our God. Uh, the last general uh, attendance and giving statistic I want to share with you comes from a gentleman named Dr. Stephen Gray. He has more than 20 years of experience as a pastor and church planter and a church planting coach. Um, he studied several hundred churches, uh, again, across the country over a period of years, but he focused exclusively on cities uh, where churches were planted that were 30,000 or greater, so medium and large cities he looked at. Uh, and this is the one nugget of his research that I want to share with you. Dr. Gray writes, 93% of church plants do not reach 200 in attendance and become self-supporting within three years. Let me restate that a little bit for you. Even in cities that have potential uh, new church members numbering 30,000 or greater large pools of people, only 7% of new church plants uh, become what Dr. Gray describes as a fast-growing church. Uh, which he defines as 
300 to 200 a week in attendance and having the ability through the church's own tithes and offerings of its own people um, to pay all of its own expenses without any financial help from the outside. Um, that means being able to do things like pay for the space the church meets in, pay for the custodians, uh, purchase all the necessary equipment um, for putting on a Sunday service, um, paying staff, doing local outreach, having an office space, advertising, giving to missions, all of the things that a church does with its budget. We've already seen, based on uh, our attendance here at the Orchard, that we're on track to be averaging 200 people in our weekly services just two and a half years from launch. And so we're well on our way to, uh, to meeting that criteria of what could be called the top 7% of new churches in the country in terms of uh, their newness. And that study, again, was based on cities of 30,000. So, uh, how are we doing on our, our journey towards self-sufficiency? Well, uh, I took all of our expenses over the last year uh, in our church family, the, the things that we have had to spend, and divided by four uh, just to see what our average need was per quarter. And uh, then I compared what our church family alone has given, not counting outside support for people that are, su that are supporting us as a mission. Uh, and I went over these numbers four or five times because I just couldn't believe what they were telling me. Um, but they are accurate. In our first three months, this congregation gave 51% of what our budget needs were. Uh, in the next quarter, uh, they went up to 57%. Uh, in the fall, it went up to 70%. And in these last three months, just our church family has met 95% of our budget needs within our church family. It is incredible. And remember, those statistics are based on cities of 30,000 or more, and we have seen this growth in a little town of 6,000. To me, that comes close to bordering on miraculous. God is up to great things in this church family, and I am so excited just to be a part of it. Um, a year ago, uh, when we had our last preview service, just before we sort of flung the doors open and invited our whole community to join us, I brought this little flower pot in here. Some of you may recognize it. It's got a couple dozen signatures on it, the people who were here that, uh, that Sunday morning. And uh, I held this up, and I said, uh, I see an orchard right here. Do you see it? It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Uh, because great things come from small, uh, even imperceptible beginnings. Zechariah 4.10 says in the Old Testament, uh, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see our small beginning as a new church plant is beginning to grow and blossom and even bear some fruit. And so maybe these trees that are on either side of the stage up here this morning uh, are a little bit closer representation to where we are as a church family this morning. And still, I look at these and I say, I see an entire orchard. Do you see it? So we're going to worship God this morning uh, based on his goodness to us as individuals and as families, uh, but equally so his goodness to us as a church family. We're going to hear from a few members of, uh, of our church about what God has been up to in their lives over this past year. And so I want to start that just by uh, praying and thanking God for this morning. And we will continue our worship and celebration. And God, we are in awe of what you are able to do and in fact have done in each of our lives individually, in our families. God, in this church family that you are growing. God, we know that you call us to each do our, our special work, but it's you that makes anything grow. And so we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for the people that you've drawn together, for the lives that have been changed and are changing, and just for the privilege of being your people, being your family, of being your ambassadors. Stay true to the mission you've given us to share your grace with everyone in our family. 